Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up a sec. YouTube is telling me that 79.1% of you that are watching my videos aren't even subscribed. What type of sorcery is this? Drag that Stuart little looking ass across the screen and hit the subscribe button. Take care. See you in the video. Hello there. Now, I'd like to begin this reaction by saying one of two things. The first thing I'd like to say is rest in peace to Mark Margolis. R.I.P. my man. God rest your soul. I know you're looking down upon this community from heaven, watching us do our Breaking Bad reactions together. And I'd like to say as well that... I only have known you for a short time and that is through Breaking Bad, but it is through that I've recognized your other roles as well. When I recognized you in Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, I actually let out a reaction as well that you were in that film. I was like, hey, that's our T.O., baby. That's our T.O. I also didn't know you were in Scarface and Requiem for a Dream, two films I have also seen as well. But yeah, you grace your presence in this show fantastically with your amazing performance. And I hope to see more of you in Better Call Saul. Now, at this moment in time, you're probably wondering to yourself, why is he saying this in his episode two reaction of season five? That is because I've pre-recorded the entire remaining episodes for season four because I am back at uni this week and the workload is absolutely monumental. So um, trying to do these reactions is very difficult at the moment. So the pre-recording was a great choice on my behalf. And I hope you guys are enjoying the reactions as well now the second thing i like to say is community shield winners baby i know you're probably thinking to yourself oh it's not a title and what's he talking about i'm talking about arsenal baby hey it's all about overcoming that mental obstacle we couldn't defeat man city last season and even though we defeated him in sort of like a preseason friendly it's the mentality that matters let's get into the reaction episode two of breaking bad season five your name your name. My name is Ellie Moses, a 23-year-old law and film student here from Sydney, Australia. Shitting is shot, baby. This episode is titled Madrigal. Let's smash it. Let's see what this episode's cooking up. Let's go. Now, from memory, the German relation in this show um, stems from the distribution company that provides some of the materials for the meth lab, I believe, or the laundry mat, like some of the ventilation things, um, from the investigative stuff Hank was doing. He talks about like, oh, they were getting these materials from this German company or this German company was supplying this stuff. I can't remember what exactly they were supplying, but it was something to do with some of the materials and equipment at the meth lab, I believe, for the laundry mat as well and like setting it all in place. Agent kick ass. Das allerdings ist eine Umformulierung. Er dachte, um gastrische Notfälle zu mildern, die vom, die vom Original hören. Smoky Mesquite BBQ mit 3% mehr Bauchgeschmack. Ja. Or might be some of the Und Los Poyos Hermanos recipes. Ketchup. Das letzte ist eigentlich nur Ketchup. Man, this guy had the best role of this scene. Just sit down and eat chicken nuggets with various sauces. There we go yet again with the corner shot in the room. Ah, fantastic camera placing in the show. They always use that corner shot. Always. Because you get the perfect... Oh, I saw the Madrigal background thing as well. That's the company. Okay. I think so. I thought this one had been like an actual like sort of prequel sort of scene right here. But it seems like no. It's set in the present with Los Poyos Hermanos going out of business after... Their CEO, um, uh, you know, we won't talk about that. It seems like this guy might be potentially in limbo at the moment after losing a great partner. And a valuable partner as well. These are men is this guy gonna kill himself because he knows what what's coming <laughs> he's like this is the easy way out Herr Schuler, würden Sie bitte aus der Toilette heraustreten? but i remember watching rocky 4 and Herr Schuler, 
Öffnen Sie diese Tür. They told me there's no easy so way out. There's no easy way out. There's no shortcut home. Herr Schula. Hey, uh, I want to use the defibrillator on myself. Yeah, that guy knew what was coming. Oh, he had some valuable information as well. Making yourself all oh Jesse. my God, on, Jesse! Listen, you you you've got to get a hold of yourself here. All right? Tell you what, I'm gonna do. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna come over there, okay? And together, we're going to look for this thing. All right? Oh, okay. I love I love that dialogue of the phone call right there and how it sounded a little bit distorted. But at the same time, some of the actions that were being spoken of in the phone call were being replicated by Walter um, as he was sort of, you know, making sort of like a replica of ricin, um, a replica of ricin sort of cigarette with the salt. And then he was talking about, you know, maybe it disappeared. And as he was talking about something disappearing, he was blowing the salt away off the table. Um, and at the same time, it kind of reminded me of earlier jesse and walt with the tone of voice and the clarity in which walt was speaking um it wasn't sort of end of season four life is on the line end of times heisenberg walt where he was just taking on the whole world and he's i am danger and everything it sounded like early season one walt right there and he was sort of um being I don't know, he kind of sounded a bit more positive and his voice was more clear, it wasn't as coarse and yeah, he was just reassuring Jesse who was the more worried one yet again. Um, but it seems like what this season 5 is producing so far, and I know we're only two episodes in, is problem after problem, consequence after consequence, uh, clean up after clean up. There's so many issues that, or loose ends that need to be tied up from season 4 and this is just another issue like finding the cigarette for example, like um, maybe a possibility with the connections with the Germans as well like there's so many things that they probably forgot they needed to clean up or like more problems that will come up for Walt when he thinks okay I'm in the clear now but something else will pop up I don't know if you guys agree with me but that's how I see it is he gonna save oh no I was about to say is he gonna save the original cigarette the OG one <laughs> He definitely saving the OG Ryson. The best thing would be like, oh, during our fight, it must have fell out of your jacket or something. And it's maybe in the grass on the front porch or in the front garden. I wonder how Walt's going to tactically play this. What the hell is that? <laughs> A Roomba. Maybe it's in the Roomba. I already checked it. Oh. When? Like a week ago. A lot's happened in that week. <laughs> okay, easy, easy. Take it. Careful. Let me see. Is it still intact? Yeah. Good. Good. No worries. Let me get rid of this. Yo, Walt acting performances around Jesse lately. Woo! Oscar worthy. Clean up all categories. Woo. I don't know about you, but I for one could use a beer. Do you have any? Jesse? <laughs> I almost shot you. Hey, hey, now. No, I almost killed you all because... <laughs> <laughs> all because I was set up by you. <laughs> misunderstanding. No, right. no, no, no. I don't know what's wrong with me, Mr. White. I didn't... Aaron Paul's so good in this show. <laughs> I don't like... know how I could be so stupid. Just stop that now. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm so sorry. 
It's crazy how the architect of all this is giving him a back massage right now. It's okay. Listen to me. <clears throat> what happened happened for the best, you hear me? And I wouldn't change a thing. You and I working together, having each other's back, it's what saved our lives. This show wouldn't surprise me if Jesse goes on his own Hank arc and it spawns like this investigative Jesse arc where he traces back everything with Walt um, for the climax of this season in terms of finding out what poisoned Brock, finding out about Jane, like everything comes to this amazing climax this season. It wouldn't surprise me if it does that. I don't know if it will, but it wouldn't surprise me. With the way this show reveals things and picks up on certain plot lines that you thought are sort of tied up. And then it will undo them again and make them messy. <laughs> it's entertaining. So I want you to think about that as we go forward. Go forward where? Who's we? We? <laughs> We're here to talk partnership. Here we go. <laughs> yes. Equal. Three ways. You, Jesse, and me. Partnership in what? Well, we figure we're going to start cooking again. <laughs> we figure why not? There's no denying the popularity of our product. There's a market to be filled. And currently, no one to fill it. A lot of money to be made. Obviously, Jesse and I have manufacture covered, but there's still distribution, support, logistics, that sort of thing. For instance, we'll need a steady supply of precursor. With your experience, that's and why you would be a the Germans help. were shown in the beginning mm -hmm. of the episode because the right. restarting the business there's as well. A lot of work ahead. There's a lot of rebuilding, and no doubt our profits will be smaller, at least at first, but. Each of us will receive a larger cut. Owners, not employees. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> I love how Mike is in his slippers and long socks. Hey man, Mike, that's me on the morning. <laughs> I know you don't care for me. We've had our issues, you and I. But I would suggest that you leave emotion out of this decision. I am. You are trouble. I'm sorry the kid here doesn't see it, but I sure as hell do. You are a time bomb. Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> He's not wrong. And I have no intention of being around for the boom. I like you, Mike. Watch Walt be like Thanos. Fine. Well, I'll do it myself. Sleep on it. Maybe you'll reconsider. In the meantime, we're pressing on. Thank you. keeps coming up. Yeah. Hey, give me a hand. Just, just a little bit there. Thanks. Yo, we need to study Steve Gomez's facial hair transformation. <laughs> Almost single-handedly, he grew our little restaurant division into an industry leader and a source of great personal pride. An innocent man does not kill himself. My people and I are here to help. To your investigation, I pledge Madrigal's full cooperation and transparency. One problem after I another. Confess, I have my selfish reasons. I believe Peter Schuler was a lone anomaly. But if that is not the case, I want to know it. Just as you do. You know, damn well, oh, that's really a big part. Damn straight. We're talking a blowout. No more captain. Hank, captain, potentially? Outstanding police work, Hank. If only I'd listen. But I guess the damage was done. It's not right to put this on you. Somebody's got to go under the bus. Ramey's a good man. 
He'll do right by you. Oh, they Science's already got a replacement. Science's practically runs itself. Anything left of the laptop? You look that lucky. <laughs> I, I sneaked a peek before APD took it out of Frank's office. The whole thing was encrypted. Maybe they wouldn't have got anything anyway. But... So Hector Salamanca killed Frank. But who gave Salamanca the bomb? A lot of questions. Not much in the way of answers. <laughs> yes. APD did find some of uh, Frank's financials. That just might lead to something. Every time I grill it now, I make a little foil pouch just like you showed me. <laughs> the whole night we were laughing. Hey, Gus was good with food. <laughs> I need somebody else completely. Right in front of me. Right under my nose. Now, obviously the thing that's on the nose right here, like the obvious thing right here is the captain's story or the sergeant's story right here. Obviously parallels what's going on in the overarching story of Breaking Bad with Hank. This relates directly to Hank, you know? I had him out to my house. He showed me how to make this thing. I had my son cook for him, like, and things like that. We had lunches together and the entire time we had a laugh, everything. We told stories together and the entire time he was right under my nose. The big mastermind was right under my nose and... Straight away parallels to Walt um, in Hank's life right now. And we know who's the true architect behind all of this. Who's been the puppet master pulling the strings. It has been Walt and he's been right under Hank's nose this entire time. Now I wonder if Hank's facial expressions right here, if he's thinking to himself, hang on a sec. I don't know if his investigative skills are that good. Um, but I wonder if Hank Holmes right here, um, Sherlock Hank Holmes is going to think to himself because the acting, um, from the actor here is fantastic as he, like, he's sort of in that deep state of thinking at the moment, like, holy damn, like, hang on a sec. I wonder if he's going to start to suspect Walt soon. And that scene ends right there as he looks up to the sergeant, like, if he's sussing about all of Walt's, you know. Miracle stories, miracle deflections. We don't have soy milk or any sort of bergamot. <laughs> We're running through my paces here. Uh, <laughs> English breakfast, I guess. We have Lipton's. That's pretty much all we have. I shout out Lipton tea. <laughs> I would like a cup of hot water, filtered if possible, and a single slice of lemon. And I'm assuming you don't have stevia. <laughs> Never mind. I brought my own. Is this a way of getting? Mike's attention. <laughs> you coming to me or am I coming to you? <laughs> Face forward. We'll talk like this. I guess I'm coming to you. <sighs> that his daughter? Hmm. Take a breath, wait. Was she at the... This place is safe. No one's going to see you here. Meeting with the DEA? Does she work for the German company? Wayne, this is so... Thank you. How did I not see you sitting back there? So weird. <laughs> you want anything else, Mike? No. <laughs> I'm good, friend. Thanks. The regular. <laughs> How about we lose the sunglasses? I feel like I'm talking to Jackie Onassis here. Oh, those sunglasses are big. There you go. They're big. Like, big, big. Breathe in, breathe out, drink your whatever. That motherfucker's wide. You're blocking another solar system sun with those glasses. Not just ours. Haven't I told you not to worry about that? Now, what do you want from me? Why is it so important? What's this? A list of 11 names. Okay. You know them. Gus's ex-wife? I'm not sure. <laughs> I do. Those 11 men, and I think you know this, Mike. Those 11 could sink us. You and me both. Where are we going with this, Lydia? No, specific. I'm just pointing out facts. These men, your men, yours and Gus's, these men were on the payroll. 
very publicly, they trace back to Poyos and the laundry, they trace back to Madrigal, and they're gonna get picked up by the police. And when they do, when they get picked up and threatened with prosecution, and there's only one way out for them, they're gonna, and I'm not saying all of them. Okay. They're gonna start talking. All it's gonna take is two or three, or even one, but there's always a weak link somewhere, but they're gonna talk. At least one of them's gonna talk about you, about me, and that is all it's gonna take. These are the 11 I know of, but I'd love your input. I never met your chemist, for instance. I love your input. He rattled, fam. She's shaking. You want me to kill every man on that list? <laughs> That's a leap, what you just... Uh, no, I didn't say that. But if you think, that'd be wise. Just say you want him to clean house. <laughs> they are solid, understand? What about Chow at the warehouse? Didn't one time you have to shoot him through the hand? Think that didn't stick in his memory? <laughs> But the laundry, they're sure to pick him up. I already have. I picked him up last night. My guys are solid. I vetted them with great care. And Fring made sure they were well compensated in the event of a situation such as this. They're paid to stand up to the heat. I love this show. Shut. I love this show. No matter what. And they will. Now, I don't know what kind of movies you've been watching, but here in the real world, we don't kill 11 people as some kind of prophylactic measure. <laughs> Look at me. I want to know what movie she's watching. say you understand. You're watching John Wick? I understand. <laughs> I get it. So we're off that very silly idea. Good. Drink your hot water. Maybe it's just the former associate of Mike or like- mm. I gotta go. Yeah, someone. Did you have enough? Yeah. I'm good. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, my big brother. <laughs> Say bye to mom for me. I will. Have a good day. Hey, you too. I wonder if we're going to sort of like revisit the entire vibes of like season one to three, was it? Or four before Skylar knew about the drug dealing situation where it's like, Walt restarts the business with Jesse, but Skylar doesn't know about it. Hey. Interesting. We didn't see anyone's face in that scene. Like it was just... The level of the camera right there was interesting. Hey, Chow. <laughs> Everyone being questioned. How are you holding up? Okay. <laughs> you know, they, they, uh, they talk to me. You can't smoke in here, Chow. Everyone taking turns at the DEA. You know Chow's voice? I swear I've heard him in something before, like some animated thing. Chow Breaking Bad, I swear. I've heard him before in some, like, what's his name? What's his name? I don't know. I can't find anything, but his voice sounds so recognizable. There's someone that sounds similar to him. Very similar. I wonder how much he talked. Thanks for coming if down. He talked. Have a seat, Mr. Uh, Herman Trout. Am I uh, saying that right? Close enough. So once more, you're waving your right to have an attorney present? Correct. Could you state that to the camera, please? <laughs> I'm waving my right to have an attorney present. Fast food restaurant, that's a full-time job? We have 14 locations, so yes, it's a full-time job. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> are you going to start sending out those resumes? Says here you're a private investigator. Where are you licensed? New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, every state where we operate. Colorado, you have some restaurants there, right? Colorado doesn't require licensure. You licensed to carry a firearm? Concealed <laughs> carry? Yes, I am. Which states? It'd be quicker to mention the states in which I'm not. And if we pulled your CCPs, everything would be in order? Yeah, I'm guessing you've already done that, so you tell me. He's got the perfect demeanor for this interview. <laughs> you strike me as a former cop. Am I right? 
we're at. See, I'm more interested in why Gus Fring decided to put a guy like you in charge of his corporate security. <laughs> I mean, given your history, doing background checks on pimple-faced fry cooks seems like overkill. What else you do for Fring? He must have needed help running that drug empire of his, no? <laughs> drug empire. First time hearing about that. I don't know anything about that. Hey, man, we have a guy that could put you in that underground lab, and he'll testify to it. So from here on out, this can go hard. That's easy. bull crap. That's bull crap. What's it going to be? No one spoke out. <laughs> My guys are solid. Forget your handcuffs. I'm confused. Am I under arrest here or am I not? <laughs> state that for the camera because you've gotten me very stirred up with all these false accusations if I'm not under arrest I'd prefer to leave oh. <laughs> the door's there <laughs> man and I suppose we could talk about the two million dollars in your granddaughter's name I laid the granddaughter out of this we don't want that yeah it seems uh, Fring had all these secret offshore accounts that he would deposit money into, like, uh, well, and even a dozen of them. And they're all in the names of certain people on his payroll. There was the, uh, the manager of the laundry. A um, couple of guys from the Poyos uh, distribution center. Uh, there was the owner of a chemical warehouse, a bunch of others, you know, guys that must have been getting paid off the books. Anyway, I was, I, one of the names was Kaylee. Airman Trout. Leave Kaylee out of this. 10 years old and just cute as a button. Hey, Hank, man, don't go there. Yeah. Two million and change we found on deposit for her way more than anybody else. Now, my partner here, he took one look at that and said, shit, man, this fifth grade girl is the muscle behind Frank's entire operation. I said, whoa, whoa <laughs> hey, partner, slow down there. Maybe <laughs> it was actually her dear old grand. I was about to say that if Mike walked out of the room, I would have been disappointed that the scene was cut short because I was literally about to say, I really want this interrogation scene to last the entire episode. I could sit here all day. I could sit here for the entire 45 minutes and watch these three in an interrogation scene. It's absolutely fantastic. The acting, the performances, the questioning, it's so good. The responses, the callbacks to earlier lines about, you know, um, don't you want to say that to the camera? Everything is really, really well done. And I... Mike came here with ammunition. Mike came here with everything. He he came ready to take every bullet in the chamber that um, Hank and Steve were going to fire at him. But I'm not sure how he's going to answer the $2 million question. We'll find out. But um, I was thinking to myself, that's why they haven't tracked Walt and Jesse because I believe everything with them was paid in cash. There was no um, accounts to trace back to. Um, but yeah... Does that mean if you say that to, I don't know how the law works in America, but um, just a quick question. Is that 2 million? Will that will remain if that, like if he's found on criminal charges, Mike, and if they, he get, does get charged, does that 2 million in his uh, granddaughter's account, um, does that get sort of frozen and taken back by uh, the federal government because it was acquired illegally? Impressive now, but level of insight. Saul probably has a way around it. He's not impressed, Kobe. Perhaps he's picturing all that money going bye-bye. Yeah, well, I mean, the government's going to take every last dollar unless... There we go. <laughs> well, here's the thing, Mike. Michael? Mr. Armantrop. Here's the thing, Mike. Lucky for you, you didn't touch that money. Cannot say the same for the other 11 on the list. One of you guys is going to roll on me. And then we'll definitely remember the handcuffs. Now, before that day comes, you can do yourself a solid. You can tell us what you know. <laughs> you can tell us who's still out there. And if we like your story, good things could happen. Kaylee might be able to keep some of that money. Some? Maybe. Kaylee deserves all of it. Leave her alone. What do you say? I want my lawyer. <laughs> I don't know anything about any money. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's that expression where he's like, fuck.
That's that expression. I'm sorry for swearing, and I don't like swearing, but that was that First expression on Michael's business face right there. To find a new place to cook. Before anyone says it, no more RVs. I don't know. Because he was pretty, in my opinion, Mike was pretty good in that situation. He held it tight. He was doing well until that question about the money popped up, and he's like probably far out, Gus. Like, you deposited that into that account. Um, I'm not even sure if Mike knew about it. I reckon that was possibly... Um, a curveball. I'm um, not too sure if he knew about it or it was probably going to come in cash. I don't know. I mean, the crystal ship did pretty good for us. The crystal ship. Yeah. That's what they called it. Well, I'll admit, it held its own as a starter lab, but it was too dark, too small. Not the to mention it could have broken down at any moment. <laughs> the RV. Shout so, out the RV. <laughs> find us someplace safe from prying eyes. Security against detection is paramount, but I don't want to drive too far. No more 50 mile treks to some <laughs> Indian reservation. In town is trickier. I mean, you got a lot more of your prying eyes. If Gus can manage it, then so can we. I love this startup thing again. Like, I'm Thank so intrigued. Sir. Very next day, what's the one thing he does not do? He does not go buy another lottery ticket, right? He counts his lucky stars and he sails off into the sunset. Which seems to me, in all due respect, some advice you two might take. <laughs> Except, what lottery did I win exactly? <laughs> hey, you're alive. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's the Irish sweepstakes. I'm alive. And I'm broke. Counting the money that I owe Jesse, I'm about 40 grand in the hole. Does that seem like an acceptable stopping point to you? There is gold in the streets. Just waiting for someone to come and scoop it up. But me, I should quit now. Jesse too, I suppose. Oh, I remember that game. I forgot what it was called. It was, that was advertised on Cartoon Network like crazy as a kid. That little book. Oh. Oh. I give up, baby. <laughs> I give up, baby. <laughs> You're too good. Hey, that's crazy. Kaylee has a net worth of $2 million, even more than Holly. <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, I want to find out the hippo board game. I'm searching hippo board game. What's it called? Hungry Hungry Hippos game. That's it. No way. It's still out. Target Australia. $25. Hungry Hungry Hippos. Hungry Hungry Hippos. Ah, the memories. Oh, you guys are probably thinking at the moment, this kid... Is a kid. <laughs> it's me. You got a minute? Yeah, a minute. What's up, Chow? The DEA. They called me to come back. Say they want to talk more. I'm sure they do. Did you call your lawyer? Yeah, but Mike, the DEA take all my money. I need it. I, I need my money. You understand? What do you want me to do about it? I don't know. Is he? I don't know. Calling at the uh, DEA? We gotta talk. <laughs> Not on the phone. Can you come to my house? This is the biggest setup of all setups. Alright. Can you give me two hours? Surely Mike knows it's the biggest setup. He's probably got Hank and Steve right in front of him. Oh, no, that's not Hank or Steve. And he's got someone in front of him. That guy looked German. Seems like there's other individuals doing cleanups. Uh, through the peephole again. Oh, you ain't gonna use one of Kaylee's plushy dolls. I'd like you to drop your gun where you stand <laughs> and turn around very slowly. Man, you can tell Mike doesn't want to take another body, man. He doesn't want to clean more things up. He will if he has to, but... Oh, oh Charles did! How much was she going to pay you? Was that Lydia? Did Lydia put him? Was Lydia? Is that her name? Ten thousand name. That girl is trouble, man. How far did you get down the list? Just Chow. But I figured I'd start with you. For you, she was gonna pay thirty. Wait, 
Okay, I take back what I said about is it Lydia being potentially related to Mike or Gus? Maybe uh, Gus potential, but like, yeah, I love the framing right there as well. The perfect three way framing. Um, yet again, as the camera sort of pans down to reveal Charles, uh, Charles' head. Um, was it? Um, I want to see that again. Uh, the reveal of his sort of head right there. Um, as they sort of take a seat in one motion and the camera's moving backwards, moving backwards and slowly panning down and you think Chow's just watching, but no, you see the little remnants of his brain on the couch and the blood and you're just like, damn, Chow's dead and he got taken out and it was a tie into the character at the beginning of the episode who's probably so anxious at the moment that she made the call with the higher ups in the German place or whatever she's connected to to start, you know, um taking action with that kill list those 11 names because she probably didn't trust mike's word right there about you know his boys being solid and because of that mike has to get involved probably again and he's probably going to go back to walt and think to himself you know what about that i need to make some money probably because the government's gonna take kaylee's <laughs> but again the perfect three-way framing right there with sort of chow's brain splattered head out of focus but then you have the hitman and mike in focus on the left and right hand side of the screen it's like perfect dividing um of the frame here and they used a similar shot right there as well in the interrogation scene with hank and steve gomez i believe from the back of mike's head revealing um hank and gomez on the left and right hand side of the scene i love this show i love it how much was she gonna pay Ten thousand a name. That's all. One hundred and eleven thousand. How far did you get down the list? One hundred and ten thousand. Just chow. But I figured I'd start with you. I know. Brain splatter. Are you ready? This is my. <laughs> <laughs> the silencer makes it sound more impactful. I swear, it just does. That's one of his boys, probably, as well. That question, man. Are you ready? Ah, oh, are you ready to die? Like, crazy. I'm counting in Italian because that's all I know. So, nove, dieci. Don't take out the lady, please. Mike's really doing things he really doesn't want to do this episode. Well, who's the adult here, Dolores? Tell me she ate her dinner, please. Is that Lydia? She ate everything. <laughs> she ate her peas, she ate her carrots. She ate a whole lot of carrots this time. A whole lot. <laughs> Dolores, I'm going to take a bath, put Kira to bed, and then go on home. I'll see you tomorrow. Really? You don't want me to no, wait for you? No, you go home. Thank you. See, Miss Lydia. Buenas noches. You going to come say goodnight to me? Yeah, honey, after Mommy takes a bath. Okay. That Thank framing, you. man. Hey, they use similar framing again with Mike in the episode where he shot Chow in the hand. Um, with that positioning of Mike behind the wall and they'd have the wall and Mike in the left hand side of the screen but on the right hand side of the screen you can see the other characters in frame and them doing the actions as well um, and I remember specifically in that episode where the camera was placed in that way where I had Mike um, sort of back against the wall with the gun ready in one take and I had the guys come out on the right hand side and he took them out in one shot right there and it was perfect and they're using a similar technique right here again in Lydia's out yo she's living good man she got money she got bread. I'm not gonna lie, this is deserved. She put a hit out on him. Don't Come hurt on. My daughter. I won't have to unless you scream. You know why I'm here? What are you waiting for? The nanny to leave. Oh my gosh, so he's gonna do you have it. Anything to say to me, now's the time. There's no doubt. Yeah. 
two good men died because of you. Don't shoot me in the face. Please. I don't want my daughter seeing me like that. Your daughter won't see you. Yes, she will. She'll oh. find me. She never once sleeps through the night. Nobody's going to find you, Lydia. Wait, what? No. 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 She has to find me. Lower your voice. She has to find me. She has to find me. I, I... Do you want your five-year-old daughter stumbling across your dead body? I can't just disappear. She has to know I didn't leave her. She has to know that. Keep your voice down. I don't care what you do. I'll, this is I'll so good. And I'll keep screaming. My, my daughter's not thinking I abandoned her. Shut up. And calm down. I don't care. You have to promise. You have to promise me. The nanny left. Oh my gosh. She ran out of time. Promise. I don't. Come on, Mike. She got a daughter, man. I wonder if this comes back to haunt him. If he doesn't kill her. Can you still get your hands on meth on me? <laughs> a favor for a favor. <laughs> meth on me, Lydia. Can you still get it? Maybe. Why? Listen, that was, th th this show's ability to create tension is monumental. And it's not only with the way the scene is constructed and the actors and their fantastic portrayals of it. It's also the dialogue is excellent. It's just so good. And the scenario surrounding it, you know, everything with the beeping, with the, you know, um, the close calls with the daughter coming across the hallway um, and the nanny coming across the hallway. It's the entire way the scene is constructed before that just adds to the tension and what's at stake. Um, and it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Now, I hope this doesn't come back to haunt Mike in the past because I actually like Mike and you can tell Mike didn't really want to do this because that's two names of the um, 11 hit list that are gone now and potentially the DEA is going to track what happened and be like, oh, hang on a second. Um, Chow's dead. We and a person we just interrogated is dead. Someone is tying up these loose ends and um, th it's not a situation Mike wanted and because of Lydia, you know, sort of maybe probably acting on impulse and because she was so anxious and um, scared that Mike's boys was going to talk, this situation arose. Now, I wonder if this is going to be hopefully a situation of Chow with Lydia, if that makes sense, where um, Chow had that warning shot by being shot in the hand, um, and this was Lydia's warning shot. Even though she wasn't shot, this was her warning call right here, and um, Mike basically spared her life, and hopefully that doesn't cause her to act out of hand again. We'll see. Because she had a daughter, man. <laughs> I'm in. This is this is a fantastic episode. This be oh, this is so good. Yes, you still plan to move forward? Yes, we do. I've reconsidered. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. He's in and can get you the methylamine. That's like crazy. I love the shadowy, dark silhouettes around Walt and Mike towards the end of the episode right there. They're going down a different path this time. They're in charge. You missed a good meal. The lasagna came out very well, if I do say so myself. I feel like Walt's becoming more like Gus. Betraying the happy side of the family. Los Payas Manos. And then when you want to turn it dark, you'll turn it dark. <laughs> Has Skylar only been in bed this episode? I think so. And this is the first time we see her face. I think. You know, it gets easier. I promise you that it does. <laughs> what you're feeling right now about uh, Ted. The guilt. The guilt. <laughs> Everything. The, the guilt becomes easier. <laughs> Trust me, babe. It'll pass. 
no better reason than family. <laughs> no better reason than family. Nice excuse there. Well, nice excuse. <laughs> Hey, that was a fantastic episode. I'd almost go to say... Is that better than episode one? I think I kind of like it better than episode one. I really like that episode. I really like that episode. I really, really like that episode. <laughs> um, that was fantastic. And I feel like I explained already, like, my breakdown. I don't want to explain too much. I don't want to go into more detail and things like that because I feel like I'll ramble on too much in the end. Um, I did enough during the episode. I feel like I did enough during the episode. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. I thought this reaction, um, in terms of my analysis, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this episode. I, I, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> all around, all around, I loved it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. As always, been your boy and Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.